The Lord closed that vision by saying to me that after she breaks things down, the man that we know as Mr. Barack Obama will come and finish it off. This is why you shouldn't listen to her. People have asked me to cover this lady, Celestial. I'm not sure what her whole title is, but apparently she she calls her herself a prophet. She's getting these downloads, these words of God from God. And apparently, I don't know how close they've been. Maybe some things she said that has come that have maybe come true. I don't know. Uh, one of the things that's kind of big now that's kind of helped her to grow is something that she said about T.D. Jake some time ago. But last I checked. T.D. Jake is still there, and we don't know if what was said about him is true or not. The allegations are out there, but that's not the point. The point is, should anyone listen to this person? No. But people have asked me, why don't I just cover her, what I think about her? Well, before I do, let me ask you guys a question. How many prophecies do you have to get wrong? How many false prophecies does it take to become a false prophet? One. That's all it takes. Don't listen to people when they tell you that a true prophet can be wrong. We don't have one example of a true prophet in the Bible being wrong. Now, I'm going to show you an example of a lying prophet and what happens to a person who is to be a prophet and lies. I'm going to show you what happens to the people that listen to that person. I'm going to show you what happens to that actual prophet who do those things and what God is trying to do. But before we do that, someone sent me a video about her, about this celestial lady giving clearly a false prophecy. So I'll let you hear it. You tell me if this is true or not. You, As a matter of fact, it's clear what she says is without question false and a reason why you should never listen to her. He is God and he is greater than the thoughts, the minds, the plans, and even the purposes of man. So God showed me that at times the prophetic voice will be mocked. It will be dismissed. It will be seen as highly improbable. This can never happen. Now, this is a prophecy that she's giving. This is, you see the day at the bottom. Uh, November the 4th, no, November the 4th, 2020. This is in regards to the presidential election. And notice, listen to who she says God tells her is going to actually be the president. And yet God says that no matter what happens and no matter what they call you, Celestial, I'm with you. And I think the unspoken part of that, it will happen. So here we go. On the 4th of November, which is the day after um, the Lord gave me the prophecy, no more grace. On the 4th of November, um, I, I, was, I was still wondering over what I had seen and heard. I was still wondering over the things that God has said that the Oval Office will be vacated by the one who would win um, this current election, which is the man we know as Joe Biden. God said that Mr. Biden would not take his term to the full. He would not. So this is what this lady is saying with her, the sheet that she has over her head, the little towel, whatever that is, over it, I guess it's her covering. But you cannot cover yourself from a false prophecy. And so she's saying that Joe Biden will not take the office. Now, she does give some some, I guess, a disclaimer. There's a little asterisk that she says won't be for long. But this is clear. This prophecy is without question false. He would not complete his term in the seat. He would abdicate his space. The word the Lord used is retire. But I will speak more on that in a further video because the Lord did speak to me quite a few days in succession about this, probably because of my own shock um, concerning what he was saying. He said that the man called Joe Biden would be retired and that his VP, Kamala Harris, would take the seat. He called her an unelected king. I also will make another video because that's another prophecy concerning that. This is Kamala's election, Celestial. And over the next few days, he would randomly, well, God isn't random, but he would just suddenly say that statement. And I think he kept doing it because I kept watching every day as we would wake up and check to see if the Associated Press had come forward with a winner. And there would be no winner. And it was... So amazing. I was thinking now one thing that you can that you'll find and you'll figure out with this lady is that she pays attention to a lot of stuff in the world, social media, news, movies, video games. Yeah, video games. And so this lady she's off her rocker. The sad part is there are people that are actually listening to this person, following this person. How long does it take to count votes? He would he said to me that day on the fourth, she will be the next president of the United States. And so, like I said, I, I didn't even understand what God was alluding to. And he finally said to me that even though this man will be declared the official winner, he is not going to be a president for long. So okay. When does she become president? Yep, we still got some time left. We have a little more, well, a little less than a year. But as it stands, unless something happens to Joe Biden, then she's not going to be the president. And he says, will not be the president for long. Well, he's been president for long. Lady, you're wrong. 
Somehow this woman will enter into the seed and she will be sworn in. And the Lord said to me, Celestial, she will bust up this country like a hammer and a brick breaker game. Now, um, to those of you who may not know what a brick breaker game is, a brick breaker game is any game that is made up of um, a little wall or bricks. And then you're given a little ball or you're given something else, perhaps a hammer. And the object of the game is for you to break through the wall so that you can get points or for you to bounce the ball and break the bricks and gain points as you do so. So the first awesome game like that was Super Mario Brothers. And yeah, God gave you this. God gave you this Super Mario Brothers Kamala Harris prophecy. And um, that's what the Lord said. So when he said she will bust up the country like a brick breaker game, I saw a huge sized Kamala Harris standing over uh, the buildings of America. And brothers and sisters, you have to you have to learn how to sometimes sew the prophetic together. When I saw that image, the first thing I thought of was the huge snake that rose from the bricks that I had seen in my dreams of of the night of November 3rd. So I saw a huge version of this woman, almost the way you know Godzilla or whatever creature is really big and towering over the city. She was bigger than everything else in the landscape. And the whole landscape looked like a video game. And she had a huge mallet, right? So she had a huge wooden, wooden mallet. And with that mallet, she swung at the nation of America. She swung left and right and she busted up the nation. The nation broke apart like Tetris. It broke apart into bricks and the bricks went flying towards my camera perspective, left and right. And as she was breaking them up, she was laughing. The Lord closed that vision by saying to me that after she breaks things down, the man that we know as Mr. Barack Obama will come and finish it off. I think it's safe to say that she will not be getting an invite to the Democratic National Committee. I think it's safe to say that she is not a Democrat or a fan of the Democrats. That being the case, she clearly is off her meds or she needs some meds. Something is wrong with this lady. What she really needs is the Lord. What she really needs is to repent. This is a false prophecy. The details that she says that God has given her are false. What happens is someone can feel a certain way, think something, maybe think strongly about it and think that they need to tell someone and to validate it, even if they think so or they don't think so, we'll say that this is from the Lord. The Bible is clear about these warnings, about these folks that presumptuously speak in my name. God said that if a person speaks in my name and what he says doesn't come to pass, that person is not a prophet of mine. Now, he might be a prophet, might be a false prophet, a lying prophet. We saw, we saw with, with, with Jeremiah in Jeremiah 14, 13. Now, Jeremiah is telling them that they're going to go into captivity. They're going to be taken out of the land. And then these false prophets want to give some sort of comforting prophecy. What does he say about them? But I, Lord God, uh, I said, look at the prophets are telling them. You will not see the sword. You will not have famine, but you will give your lasting peace in this place. And the Lord said to me. The prophets are prophesying falsehood in my name. And he calls them prophets, but they're not prophets of his. I have I have neither sent them nor commanded them nor spoken to them. They are prophesying to you a false vision, divination, futility, and the deception of their own minds. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who are prophesying in my name, although it was not I who sent them, yet they keep saying, saying there will be no sword or famine in the land. By sword and famine, those prophets shall meet their end. When you do these things, God is not going to be happy. He's not. God does not take kindly to someone saying that he says something when he didn't. In Ezekiel 14, 9, we see that God is even going to possibly move on the false prophet. Why? Well, because he is testing the people. He's going to use them. And the point is that he will even maybe even push on them, on the prophet. Don't know. The Bible's not totally clear how this happens, but he's going to judge the prophet as well as the people that listen to them. And nowhere, no more vividly is this shown out than in 1 Kings 13, where there's this man of God who is told by God, has the word of God what to do. He's following it until a prophet comes. An old prophet who is a lying prophet comes and says that God says to do the opposite of what he told him to do. Do not eat, do not stay there, but leave. And so he goes into this old man's house who calls himself a prophet because he calls himself a prophet. Because what, because what's happening now, we've got people today that because they call themselves a prophet, people just want to hear about it. People want to hear what they're saying rather than listening to the word of the Lord. We'll come back to that in a second. But in First Kings 13, the Lord then speaks to this false prophet, to this lying prophet. Why? 
to bring about judgment to the man who listened. He says, now it came about as they were sitting down at the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the man of God who came from Judah, thus saying, thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the command of the Lord and have not observed the commandment which your Lord, your God, which the Lord, your God, had commanded you, but have turned uh, and eaten bread and drunk water in this place, which he said, do not do so. He says, your body shall not come to the grave of your father. So what ends up happening? He's killed by a lion and the lion doesn't eat him. The lion just kills him and stays there. Doesn't eat the donkey that he's with or anything else. Why? Because the point that, he, that needs to be proven is if you follow these people, there are going to be consequences. Now, if you want to hear the word of the Lord, you have it at your disposal. That is the Bible. Peter says, like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word so that you may grow in it. Uh, in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. And that's the, that's the issue. If you indeed have tasted the kindness of the Lord, that's what you're going to want. But the fact is, those folks that want the celestials and want these other prophets, they probably have not tasted the kindness of the Lord. They want something else. You seek after a sign, as Jesus says, a, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after signs. But there is going to be a sign that's given. That is the Son of Man to be buried and to be risen after three, three days, just like Noah. I mean, just like Jonah. The problem is that's not good enough for you, which indicates you're probably not his. Indicates that you have a desire for something other than the Lord. And for those folks that are falling after this utterly silly lady with her false prophecies after false prophecies after false prophecies, as she gets one in the ballpark or two or three in the ballpark, and you think that you've heard something for you, the, we don't have to worry about what her punishment is going to be. God will deal with her. But for following her, what will your punishment be? Mm -hmm.